Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. Welcome back to Legion Suit Larry 7. Ah, what did we do last time? So we met the Jugs. We broke into the employees only section. We, uh, we failed a lot. There was a lot of failure going on. What is up with this topiary? This one looks great. There's a duck and there's a beaver. What's up with this one? You can't even look at it. That's really sad. So here we are in the promenade deck. I, I just gotta look at the goose. I can't help it. I can't not look at the goose. Every fine ship has plants carved into the shape of animals. But a goose? Why not a goose? Why not a beaver? Oh boy, another beaver joke. Let's see, have you heard the one about the two beavers who went bike riding? Oh, not again. Oh, you've heard it. They really give Neil some open range on his smarm. I love it. Oh, and by looking at the beaver a bit more closely, who's hiding in his butt? Yeah, baby! There he is! Yeah. Yep, take your time, Dilds. Go ahead. Okay, so now I also I remember that we went downstairs to our room and we discovered that we could not flush it. The toilet because it did not have a hose we could get to the water. But I apologize for the awful French acts, but here's a hose right here. Let's take this. A small sign reads, open only in case of fire. Caution, alarm will sound. Ah, uh, that is always an empty threat. Every single time. There's never an alarm. Trust me, I know. No alarm sounds. See? Hmm. Makes me wonder about all those times I didn't sneak into movie theaters. You'd be surprised how often that so many people are dissuaded just because there's a silly little sign saying, Don't do it. But you do it anyway, and no one gives a crap. There we go. All that hose goes right in my pants. Can I close this up? Can I be a good little boy scout? You're so polite. After robbing them blind, yes, I'm a good little boy. Can I turn this wheel? What is it? This wheel must do something, but you have no idea what. Well, maybe this plaque above it? Nope, there's nothing there. Well, let's turn the heck out of that. Sorry, I know I'm wasting time, but this game gives you so much freedom. Why would you not take advantage of it? Ow! Actually, I rather enjoyed that. What? Is it hooked up directly to Neil? Did, did you feel that? Ow! Actually, I rather enjoyed that. Interesting. Okay, so this is like our direct line to the narrator. Is he in there? Are you inside the Seaman Lounge? Oh, oh and there's Patty. Pa Patty? No, not Patty. Uh, Peggy. Peggy's her name. Peggy. Hey, Peggy. What you, uh... Oh, look at you with your flying crane kicks trying to fix the fish topiary. It's not looking any better. Peggy is the ship's surly, foul-mouthed deckhand. Heavily affected by a childhood spent watching too many pirate movies, she thinks she's a swashbuckler. She even had her peg leg rigged to accept multiple interchangeable janitorial attachments. I wish I could hear that over top of the ground. Oh, uh, let's just talk to her. Hi, Peggy! Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, may I bother you for a moment? <laughs> This god salt hair is rusting me f***ing leg socket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who the hell are you? Uh, my name is Larry. Hmm? Larry Laffer? Uh, yeah, well, I'm Peggy. And did I mention this salt hair is rusting me f***? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. Well, you don't have to be so f***ing uppity. I adore Peggy so much. You've got to admit, not many women are daring enough to go for that beard stubble look. <laughs> oh no, I forgot you could do this. You could actually look at like all the individual body parts of every girl, including Peggy. I can't read that. Al, what are you asking me to do here? I, I can't, I have, I have standards. I'm a professional spokesperson. I happen to be the voice of the allied car dealers of Banning. Okay, that was funny. I think that was staged, but I think it looked like I was trying to read his her name tag and he's like, I can't read that. And then, um, okay. 
I, I like that little Easter egg. That's really cute. Oh, I can't look at their arms. Oh, no. Oh, Larry's arm fetish will go wanting. I can't look at her mole specifically. I can look at her eye. Peggy's one good eye is more than enough. Uh, let's see. Poke? Oh, I can't poke her eye. Lame. Uh, well, maybe I can use it for the security system. Pluck out. Damn. I can see why they call you Peggy. Peggy. Oh, can you lame ass? It's because my f***ing mother named me Margaret, you stupid c sucker. Oh, Peggy, never change. So, um, how'd you lose your leg, Peg? Ah, uh, freak f***ing accident, that's how. One day, I inadvertently combined KZ Jelly with deodorant spray, forming a powerful contact explosive. Sexual lubricant? Deodorant spray? And you lost your leg? Let's just say I wasn't spraying me f***ing armpits, okay, asshole? Ooh, okay. <laughs> no more details, please. Interesting. Okay, so we've learned that KY Jelly, which I have, and deodorant spray, which I do not have, I, I don't think, forms a powerful contact explosive. Good to know, I'm sure, later on. Larry, will you even do it? No. No, nope, Larry refuses. Is it just me, or do you seem to swear a lot? Swear? Oh, hell no, motherfucker! I suffer <laughs> from Clorets. Clorets? <laughs> Don't you mean Tourette's? No, ya dumb twat! I mean I got a foul mouth! That's a joke I always remember, but I'm not sure who in this modern era remember who what Clorets was. But in short, Clorets was a uh, breath mint back in the day. Only Clorets has act as all with chlorophyll, gets rid of bad breath fast. Uh, so foul mouth, you get it? It's funny. Uh, Miss Peggy, can you help me with these competitions? Help you? No, it's guys like you that dribble all over the f***ing love master, and then guess who has to clean all that shit up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good old Peggy, that's who. Shit. I can't tell you how many times me peg leg's been stuck in that god drain. Don't want to really have to ask about what kind of cleaning she has to do in the love master. I guess someone's got to go in there and vacuum that. Oh god, I'm gonna be sick. I'll see you around, Miss Peggy. It's been my f***ing pleasure, you p <laughs> There's still a lot more to do in the little semen lounge here, though I always kind of forget how to do it. Like, there's this stage up here where Peter was giving the, uh, the opening speech. You'd love to go on stage, but you forgot your climbing gear. Hey, yeah, why didn't I bring my climbing gear? Because you don't have climbing gear. Oh, well, yeah. That was really kind of fierce, Neil. Okay, but if we go down this way... There we go. There's the rest of it. So here's more stage stuff. We can play with the wheel, but more importantly... Johnson! Johnson the bartender fits the old cliché, surly to bed, surly to rise. All right, I love Johnson. Hey, Johnson, how you doing, buddy? Uh, howdy, barkeep. What do you got? My name's Johnson, and anything you want, we got. What do you want? I would like uh, either an Alexander Keats Pale or some sort of like really strong IPA. Uh, bourbon cocktail, no. IPA, no. Um, how about beer? Hmm. All right, anything I want, you got, huh, liar? Also. His chest hair really looks like someone's autograph. Like, there's like a J and like a B there, really obviously. But I don't know whose it is. Whoa, while I was kind of perusing IMDB's trivia page, because it's always a good way to find some behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, check this out. This is uh, Peggy, uh, was named after the game's lead computer artist, Peggy Skrillick. Uh, but due to the use of her fa uh, foul language, Peggy's voice actor chose to be uncredited for the role. She did not want to affect her status as the voice of Disney Snow White at the time. 
Oh my God, that's awesome. Also interesting, Mary Kay Bergman holds the distinction of voicing the most characters in Leisure Suit Larry games. Yeah, she's all over the place. Uh, she was credited for nine, but chose to go uncredited for two that were considered too risque. Whoa. I did not know this. Oh, and I gotta find out who those are. Well, I didn't find that out, but I did find this little Easter egg. If you hit control P, um, it'll give you the score, but if you hit control P again, apparently, psychedelic mode, baby. Oh, God. Oh, man, this is awful. Let's never do that again. I remember this from Torrin's Passage. I think this was a thing. Oh, hey, Dildo. I didn't see you over there, buddy. Nice try. Yeah, baby. Johnson, do you blink at all? How about a bourbon and soda? On the rocks, with a twist, and an umbrella, <laughs> and, and some fruit, and maybe a bendy straw. You know, one of those, you know, <clears throat> if you got them. You about done. Uh, yeah. Here, we ain't got no bendy straws, so I gave you a Captain Happy's barrel of fun straw. Uh, I guess it'll have Captain to do. Captain Happy. What do I owe you? Nothing. I'll put it on your room. Got a key card? Right here. Okay, now drink it. <laughs> That was it. No jokes about the bourbon or no jokes about, oh, Tuesday's your night in the barrel or anything like that, or the fact that the straw is so obviously is p Give me a... Oh, just point to the menu. One of those. No problem. Coming right up. Here you go. Boy, are these drinks watered down. All right, so I think that's their way of also saying that I can drink as much as I want and I will never get drunk. But I kind of like that cup. I'm gonna give that one to uh, to Maven. Anything else? Give me a... Oh. One of those. No problem. Here you go. <laughs> Boy, are these... So this one appears to be a pirate monkey with a nipple on his head. Sure. And let's see, we got the hula dancer, Carmen Miranda, with some sort of cocktail salad on her head. There we go. It took me a while because I kept getting the same ones. It's random. So now we got the woman's slipper with a crazy straw. They did have crazy straws after all, the jerks. There, there we go. So we got, I, I must have drank about 20 drinks so far and I'm feeling great. So we got the uh, tiki cup with the shades. That's how many more could there possibly be? All right, I've, I've drank about 50 drinks so far, and I'm reasonably confident we've seen all the different cups there are. So we'll move right into the bartender's secondary job and laying all my troubles directly on his sh uncaring shoulders. You must get a lot of guys in here telling you their troubles, don't you? Is it hard, Johnson? Yeah, makes me sick. I usually punch their lights out. Why? Oh, hmm, no reason. All right, so this is not the caring feeling type of bartender, not the classic one, not the love boat bartender. He's not going to be snapping his fingers and giving us good love advice. Just here to give us glasses of water with maybe a quarter ounce of gin or something in it. I uh, bet you see a lot of beautiful women working here, huh, Johnson? Yeah, so what? I'm just making conversation. And I'm just making drinks. Why don't you stop yapping and order one? I just ordered like 17 drinks. Oh man, my bill is gonna be awful. To you, they do have beer. These are so obviously beer taps. Why would not you give me the beer? Anything back here I can play with? Ah, well, whatever, bye-bye. See you later, Johnson. Yeah, whatever. I really wanna know whose autograph that is. Now you can go Your up here and play around. Please. And just looking around and being a little more observant than I normally am. Oh my God, there are just dicks everywhere. There's dick, 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 dick. Yeah, that's a lot. I know all of you said that. I know all of you said how many dicks is that? All of you. The rear gallery is reserved for standing room only crowds. To date, it is unused. It's a real shame I can't play with the wheel in particular. Now, I know, if I go back over this way, I know there's a way to get up on this stage, but I don't know how. Uh, okay, I wonder if I can just climb up there. Climb that? No way. Dick, 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 dick. And this one's got little flowers coming. I tried to do it with a straight face. I really did. Let's get out of here. So there's a cat topiary. There's a, is this a weasel or what is this? A Dragon? A one-eyed topiary weasel? Probably in show business. 
Uh, that is a dick joke, but I don't know how it is. Hey, there's a little, like, uh, where's dildo topiary. Does this count? Whoever heard of a topiary where's dildo? Uh, Neil, I hope you got paid a lot of money for this. What's back here? Don't you wish you could see the stuff that's back here? All right, where else can we go and fail horribly? We got plenty of time left, so let's, uh, let's go to the pool. We haven't been to the pool yet, which seems really obvious on a cruise ship. And, oh, hello, Mr. Clown with, a uh, and Ron Jeremy, apparently. Sir, do you realize that a hedgehog just walked by? Oh, and all these, like, here's clothes of all, like, these famous cartoon characters. Like, here's Cat in the Hat, and there's that guy from Fat Albert's hat. Uh, I can't remember his name. Mushmouth, I think his name was. Donald Duck's hat. I don't know what that green one is. Fred Flintstone, Mickey Mouse. These seem, that's really disturbing. I'm glad I can't look at him. I don't know what that is. Charlie Brown. Is that anything? I don't know. Let's go swim. Oh, I found you. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Clothing optional. I'm wearing clothes. That's my choice. Whoa. Sorry, dude. You got to stop here. Why? What's wrong? You. You can't enter the pool like that. Like what? Like that. You know, dressed. Why not, dude? Safety reasons, dude. For sure. Safety reasons? Way. Purser's orders. That polyester fabric could ignite in this tropical sun. So, drop them. Well, I don't think I should enter naked. I mean, everyone would, um, stare, you know, at my, uh, <clears throat> physical attributes. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, Dick, once I went into a restaurant that required a tie, and, well, because of my personal aversion to owning anything other than leisure wear, um, I never had a tie. So, I... Sure, I got courtesy loaners. Oh. This little dude right here is exactly what you need. Oh, great. Of course I couldn't get a normal swimsuit. Can I at least have a towel to cover it up? For sure! No problem, dude. Now, don't get it wet. It might shrink. <laughs> oh, I got sunscreen in my eyes. Boy, oh, towel boy. I need a towel here, please, quick. <gasps> Oops. Oh, boy. Oh, thank you. Well, well, what have we here? <laughs> Is that your trunk or are you just glad to see me? And what's your name, little Babar? Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. And you? Drew Barrymore. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a codpiece since I took Professor Lipkin's minor playwrights of the late Elizabethan period during my sophomore year at Barnard, and I've never seen one with such a cute African influence. You know, I'm quite interested in history, but I'm essentially ignorant of anything past the tertiary level African tribes. Could you share a little of its immediate history with me? Perhaps its regional influences or its acquisition history? Oh, well, the cabana boy gave it to me because I forgot my swimsuit. Oh. Well, that all happened very quickly. So there's a couple things I queued up in my brain uh, while all that was going on. So uh, the, uh, the cabana boy, uh, Dick, I guess, he mentioned the purser. And I, I'm 90% certain that they are the same voice actor if you listen really closely. I have a, I'm a, I have a thing for a voice act. I, I realize I'm talking about voice acting while there is a, a naked person uh, just chilling out right here in front of me, ignoring them and talking on this, uh, what I can assume to be a laptop, though it looks really small for something that could be possibly be invented in, uh, the 90s, but I never really thought about it before. Anyway, well, this is Drew Barrymore, a obvious pun on Drew Barrymore, so let's learn a little bit about her, shall we? You don't have any clothing at all, do you, Drew? Of course not! I love nudism so much that just as soon as I board ship, I get rid of every single piece of pesky clothing. Good idea. And I force my cabin boy to lock up my suitcase someplace where I can't possibly find it so I can spend the entire week here by the pool naked. I eat, sleep, sun, and swim here, never leaving the comfort of the chaise. It may not be an ideal vacation for everyone, but for me, well, it's what I love most. Oh, this tropical sun is brutal. I hope you don't mind, Larry, but I need to spend a few minutes rubbing this sunscreen all over my naked body. Need help? No, but uh, nice try. 
I really like the way it makes my skin glisten, you know? The way it brings out the soft little hairs on the back of my neck, my arms, my... Stop! I can't take it! Aww, I didn't realize I was being so hard on you. Excuse me, Larry, here comes a waiter. This'll just take a oh, second. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt here. I know this is kind of a long-winded one, but you're going to need a little bit of context for what you're about to hear. So um, back on the original CD of Leisure Suit Larry 7, which was made for Windows like 95 or whatever, the game came with a little mini script. And if you had a sound card, which well, I guess I imagine you would at this point, uh, and um, an audio recorder microphone, you could record yourself saying these lines save them into your game directory, and then the game would read them so your voice would appear in the game, which I don't think any game has done up until this point. There is even an option that you'll see later on where you can upload a, a bitmap of yourself. You know those old BMP files from Windows 3.1 onwards? Yeah, you could put yourself in the game, and uh, I'll show you where that comes into play. It'll probably pop up a little bit later uh, yeah, towards the end of the game. Uh, I didn't have time to prepare anything, and it'd be kind of stupid if I just used my own voice, and I'm pretty lazy, so I just kind of availed myself to the modern text-to-speech uh, software that exists on the modern-day internet, so I, I hope this suits the uh, tone and purpose well. Uh, me Excuse me, Larry. Here comes a waiter. This'll just take a second. Waiter! A waiter! Hey, they're beautiful! What can I do for you? I want a gigantic erection. Looks like your little buddy there has got you covered, eh? What? I said bring me a gigantic erection. Well, okay, baby. I'm your man. Well, where is it? I'm working on it. Mind moving that computer? <laughs> Look. I want a mixed drink, a cocktail, you know, lime juice, 151 proof rum, vodka, triple sec, mayonnaise with a hollowed out frozen banana to suck through. You know, a gigantic erection. Okay, but it'll take a while, you know. I love it. It's a game even though you try to stymie me. Screw you, I have my ways. I love Drew. She's such a good character. She's she's well-meaning, she's intelligent, she's smart, and that she just has a thing for nudism, which is totally fine. But aren't you kind of worried about the tan line that that uh, computer's gonna give you? So, you recognize this as a con piece? Of course. It's been a few years, but I believe my college text defined it as a pouch at the crotch of the tight-fitting breeches worn by men in the 15th and 16th centuries. It's from the Middle English word cod pes. A cod, a bag, a scrotum, which came from the Old English word cod, meaning bag plus pes, meaning peace. Is that your understanding, Larry? Yeah. Thanks. Aren't you worried about overexposure? Oh, no, not anymore. Sure, once upon a time, I had to limit my exposure, especially on a tropical cruise like this, but ever since I discovered this SPF 300, I have no problems at all. Every few minutes, I carefully, slowly, thoroughly rub it over every single inch of my naked body. Aww. And of course, my laptop computer here does offer some protection, although I do get a peculiar tan line. Aww. Larry, is my nudity making you uncomfortable? Is this hard for you? No, it's been like this ever since I got here. I like how she challenges him a little bit. It's like, look, this is what's going on. Is this difficult for you? I, I love it. It's You're seeing a big tonal shift from the first six games to this one where it's a little bit... Oh, never mind. You dig in. You read philosophically what you want to read into it. You already know my views. So, uh, did I ever tell you I know Al Lowe personally? Who? Oh, I remember him. He came through here last November. Unimpressive. Yeah, maybe. Not him, Larry. You. Oh, zing. Okay, I thought it was a dig at Al Lowe, but it was a dig at Larry instead. Your book. Uh, what is your book? Can I, oh, I can look at it. Drew's book. Looks like Drew is reading The Erotic Adventures of Hercules. That guy on the cover makes Fabio look like a 98-pound weakling. It's solid red. Oh, this must be the SPF. Oh, I must be able to take this at some point. Drew never computes without her SPF 300. I can't imagine that's a joke about anything because SPF, was it sun, sun protection factor? Is that what it was? Drew, would you mind if I borrowed your book? Not at all. I finished it. Oh. <laughs> I was expecting to have to steal it, but I literally just asked for it and it's totally fine. 
All right, so now we're going to ask her about Anton Fokker, the father of the modern machine gun and propeller planes. But uh, prepare to learn a little bit of history here, because it's the only reason I know who Anton Fokker is. Edutainment, folks. I've always been very fond of that wonderful German inventor, Anton Fokker. <laughs> Have you ever heard of him? Anton Fokker? But of course, I wrote the book on him. So you have heard of him? No, I mean, I literally wrote the book on him. I'm the author of his best-selling biography. It's recognized everywhere as the classic treatise on the subject. I called it Fokker, more than just an airplane. Uh, yeah. Um, I just love discussing historical aircraft designers. Me too! You know, it's funny, Larry. It seems like these cruise ships are filled with phonies who just want to bore me. I could see that. But it's wonderful to find a kindred spirit like you, someone interested in aviation history, particularly the airplanes of my dear sweet Anton. Excuse me, could you look me in the eyes? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, sorry. Love it. Okay, so we remember when we were in the library, we saw that book on Anton Fokker, who was indeed written by Drew Barrymore, so she must be working on her new book. Drew's laptop has a problem with overheating. It needs one of those new low-voltage chippy thingies. <laughs> Who said the heat was coming from the computer? Her thighs? Want me to recharge your laptop? Oh no, Larry, that's not necessary. I can still feel the juices flowing. Oh, me too. I just love the look on his face. Mind if I borrow your laptop to check my email? Oh, I'm working offline. I didn't even bring my cellular modem. You might say I'm computing au naturel. No kidding. I had no idea this kind of technology existed back in uh, 19, 2000, whatever. Probably in the 19s. But a cellular modem in a laptop that small? Really? Interesting. Well, this was indefinitely before the days of Wi-Fi. I think I'll have a drink myself. Oh, uh, waiter. I want the same thing the lady ordered. Nice suit. Uh, no, uh, please, bring me a gigantic erection. Oh, that will take a while for the bartender to fix. Wait right here. Okay, there he was again. Hello. Now, there is a hint here. So the fact that this drink here takes uh, such a long time to make Remember that. That'll come in handy later. But let's continue our discussion about Anton Fokker, Miss Barrymore. This is very interesting. So, you really know a lot about this guy, huh? Oh, yes. Fokker, Anton Hermann Gerard, 1890-1939, Dutch-born German-American aircraft designer and aircraft manufacturer, born Java. His factories in Germany produced triplanes and biplanes used in World War I. He revolutionized aerial warfare by synchronizing a front-mounted machine gun to fire through the propeller of a plane without intercepting the blades, 1915. He later turned to developing commercial aircraft and came to the U.S. in 1922. Wow! You really know a lot about those Fokkers. You know there's a joke coming. Let's just keep on going down the Anton quest line. I've always felt Anton never received the recognition he so sorely deserved. Oh, you are knowledgeable, aren't you, Larry? Yes, Anton was a wonderful inventor, a genius, really. But he wasn't a brilliant businessman. It was his mother who really ran the company, you know. Yes, she was a tyrant who ruled with an iron fist. You mean... Say it. Yes, she was one mean motherfucker. Ugh. I think we could all see that one coming. Oh, but it's appreciated nonetheless. I've never heard of a gigantic erection. Oh, it's my favorite drink, Larry. Usually I suck it all down, then nibble for hours on its hard, frozen banana. Oh, lordy, lordy, help me, lordy. <laughs> Hey, you're in tropical environments. I don't think that banana would stay frozen for more than about, uh, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes at the most. I would really enjoy having a more in-depth discussion with you, Drew. Really? Me too. In fact, I could fuck her all night long. Whoop. Ah, uh, that's pretty much what I was thinking. So, uh, you want to go back to my room to see my aircraft etchings? I'd love to. But I can't. Excuse me, could you look me in the eyes? Oh, uh, sorry. What do you mean, you can't? 
I can't, because remember, I ordered the cabin boy to lock up my clothing for the duration of the cruise, and you know I just can't violate the ship's rules and walk brazenly, boldly naked through the clothing required parts of the ship like some sort of exhibitionist. That would never do. No, I'll just have to stay here, lying here naked all night, the cool tropical breezes gently wafting over my bare skin. <sighs> I can't believe I've got to get a totally naked woman into her clothing. So interestingly, she's absolutely she she does not leave this position at all. She sleeps here, she eats here, she bathes here. She's got to be smelling a little bit ripe at this point. More power to you, Drew. We'll come back to you later. So we got to find the cabin boy and figure out where her clothes are. And if we can get her clothes, we can invite her elsewhere. Ha ha. Uh, Drew, I'm gonna go now. Okay, maybe we'll be seeing more of each other soon. Like that's possible. Wait, I forgot something before we go. There are a ton of Easter eggs in this game and finding them I think is a requisite for having the secret ending, which I don't, I think I've seen only once in my, uh, in my playthroughs of this game. But anyway, all the Easter eggs have to do with um, sort of nudity, so you won't be able to see them, but know they exist in some degree or another. So you'll notice this pesky branch. If you just move over a little, that branch wouldn't be in the way. You'd love to move the branch, but your heart couldn't take it. The palm branch is quite strong. You'll never break it. You can't even move it. Well, you can't move it legitimately, but you can just give it a quick little push. <sighs> There we go, and you'll notice the little Easter egg up there in the corner. Those are important. I think there's seven of them in total. I can't remember. But anyway, that was a thing. Bye. Uh, oh, what's this magazine? Is this a thing? It's a copy of Persons Magazine with a big cover story on that hot mother-daughter country western singing duo, The Jugs. Oh, maybe we can read a little bit more about what actually happened. Uh, other read, is that a thing? It's so difficult to read, lying there on the table, closed. Of course, if you took it... Oh, all right, well, fine. Let's check this out right now. Here's an article about the country western singing duo, The Jugs. It seems there was a little incident at a recent benefit concert where they were arrested and charged with public lewdness and solicitation. Their publicist blamed it all on a rare chemical sensitivity problem. The article concludes by saying the girls are going to take a little time off, staying out of the limelight until the scandal dies down. Eh, celebrity magazines are so boring. I'll just leave it here. All right, well, besides, we already got the, the story straight from the horse's mouth. We met them. We talked about it. Now, apparently, uh, this is supposed to be Al Lowe down here with his, his gut, I think. Uh, they said Al Lowe is supposed to be down here somewhere, but look at these guys. Hi. The pool is filled with frolicking naked young bodies. Unfortunately, this balcony is too high up to get a good view, and the stairs down are nowhere to be seen. Why is that? Oh, there's a good reason. You see, the plot doesn't require nude scenes from all those characters, and Al Lowe would never include dozens of naked bodies merely for prurient interest. Ah. Oh. Say, uh, <clears throat> is that the real reason? No. Our budget was too low to animate all of it. Ugh. <laughs> Neil, you sound so cruel. Okay, I think if you go back to the map, you immediately just change back into your leisure suit, but you're automatically back in little Babar whenever you come back to the pool, which is handy. Wow, that is one blurry looking pool. And I figure we got a little bit of time left. Let's go to, hey, Dilds, what's up? Yeah, baby. Since we're here, we got the fire hose. Let's, speaking of which, let's get this toilet working. Uh, use the erotic adventures of Hercules on the water pipe. No, that won't do it. What does it say if we do? Try using that book where it will be among friends. Wow, the, the hints are really, uh, really right on the nose, aren't they? All right, fire hose here. It doesn't look long enough to make it, but... Thankfully, it stretches. Thank you, animation. Now that toilet will have plenty of water. Well, not really, because you have to open up the valve to do it, so you put water in it, 
uh, with a high pressure water hose and then it's gonna like basically explode the tank and then you gotta turn I don't know well whatever let's see I get points for it nice aim oh you also get points for putting your big hairy sweaty butt right on it I also wonder if you get points for uh, doing the whole sitting down and wiping thing yep apparently good idea get everything done at once there better be more points behind this. What are you going to use? Your leisure suit? I have, a, I have toilet paper in my pocket. Where is it? There it is. Oh, oh, that is rough. All right, no additional points for it, but I can flush. And I get points for that. Here it comes, and in you go, and don't, don't do it. Okay, thank you for not being the turd, because sometimes a turd will float on out of there. And with that bombshell, I think that's plenty for this part. Oh god, I'm I'm kind of I. It really took the wind out of my sails that the whole uh, put yourself in the game thing does not work the way it was intended. But uh, don't worry, I have a plan. We're gonna figure out a way around this. But until then, I am as always yours. Good night, jelly beans. Good night.